So this is a joint work with some of my PhD students and postdocs. Uh, Mayorina, who is a PhD candidate at Cosmos Research Center. Monoral, who is also a PhD student at Cosmos Center. Uh, Emma Del Tawil, postdoc fellow at Cosmos Center. And I'm Nitin Agarwal, uh, running the Cosmos Center. And also Jerry L. Malden, Energy Chair and Distinguished Professor of Information Science at um, University of Arkansas Little Rock. I'm also a faculty fellow at University of California, Berkeley and other affiliations, as you can see. Uh, since this is a short paper, and I believe this is the only short paper special, uh, so I have uh, 15 minutes, so I'll try to squeeze in as much content as possible. So start with background. Um, YouTube plays a pivotal role in shaping the public narrative, you all know that, uh, with over 2.7 billion users worldwide. And uh, YouTube reports that 70% of their user base consume content that is suggested by the platform recommendation algorithms and user engagement uh, with these videos uh, lead to dynamically curated additional content such as the related video stream where the selections that we make trigger a continuous loop of these fresh recommendations. So it is clear that recommendation algorithms have a vital role in shaping the discourse of our communities, right? There is a lot of research that is currently going on and more is needed on YouTube recommendation systems. Uh, but most of this research is utilizing metadata like the titles, description, the YouTube video transcripts, etc. But not focusing so much on the abstractive summaries of these uh, videos. Right? And um, more such studies are needed to understand how a content is favored by these recommendation algorithms and also uh, whether these platforms are effective in reducing or minimizing the spread of harmful content, right? <clears throat> now we see <coughs> two problems in this domain. Number one is we have observed that the title and description of YouTube videos may not always fully convey the narrative of the videos that the videos are aimed to portray or they are aiming to project. Here is an example where you can see the title of the video is how the US and China are preparing to fight total war. But when you watch the video and look at the narratives that are being projected, they are not as toxic as the title. So there seems to be a disconnect or a gap between what the titles are and probably we can speculate reasons for this, which could be the content creators may be using these strategies like attention grabbing headlines for monetization or maybe even more malicious reasons. <clears throat> so that is one of the challenges that we see in this uh, domain, that the recommendation algorithms also, the studies that uh, are going on for recommendation algorithms, the biases, etc., they should look beyond the title and description of the videos. They should actually look at the video content. The second, so the first problem is going to be studied in this uh, research paper. The second problem is these current methodologies fail to recognize the difference between short form videos like TikTok, YouTube Shorts, Instagram Reels versus the long form or regular videos like podcasts, etc. Um, and recommendation algorithms definitely make a key difference between these different types of videos. So uh, recognizing that difference in these studies is also important, which forms one of our future studies. In fact, we are currently conducting an experiment and hopefully we'll be able to submit a paper soon to all the conferences. So in, address, in order to address the first problem, uh, I'm going to go over very briefly on the methodology that we have here. So we start with YouTube, as I mentioned, one of the most prominent platforms, multimedia platforms. So we collect data from YouTube using data collection APIs. And here are some of the keywords that are used. South China Sea, China Sea Conflict, ASEAN, um, United Nations Convention for uh, Law of the Sea, US-China Relations, Freedom of Navigation, etc. Once the data is collected, videos are collected, we grab their transcripts, if the transcripts are available with the videos. If not, then uh, we use a distributed computing environment to rapidly generate these transcripts using Whisper API, uh, APIs and uh, translate them into English because many of these videos are in non-English languages. In fact, um, our technique for generating these transcripts is uh, recently published and is going to be presented at the end of this month at the 
IEEE workshop on parallel and distributed computing for computational social systems for social that is held along with parallel and distributed processing symposium. So once the transcripts are generated, we run those transcripts through GPT-4 to extract or abstractive summaries or narratives and then start analyzing them, looking at toxicity, sentiments, emotions, etc. Here we have some of the GPT prompt that is used to extract these summaries as well as the parameters. So uh, diving into the results, first we look at the sentiment analysis. On the left, we have the sentiment analysis from these videos at different hops of recommendations, um, just for the titles. And on the right, we have the same just for the narratives. Right. So I should have clarified a little bit further there that when we grab the videos, we're not just grabbing the videos by the keywords, we're also grabbing their recommendations. So video and what are the top 10 recommendations for the video. We go all the way up to third hop, meaning starting from seed, which is the keyword related videos, to hop one or the first depth of recommendation, which gives us top 10 and then further 10 and so on. So at first hop at seed zero or seed or depth zero, we have 10. Then we have 100 videos, then 1,000, and 10,000. Okay. So as you can see here, for the titles, we don't see much variation in the sentiment. right? So the first bar is for seed or depth 0, depth 1, 2, and 3. Pretty st standard or same, uniform. While on the narrative side, we do see a rising emotion, uh, sentiment diversity. The neutral sentiments are reducing while the negative and positive sentiments are increasing. In fact, the positive sentiments are consistently increasing over depth, suggesting more and more positive, joyful content being pushed by the recommendation algorithms. But that is not captured in the titles. Okay. When we start looking at the toxicity analysis, which basically uses perspective APIs to discover how much harmful content there is, uh, we see differences. Titles now show most very harmful content, right? In fact, the gap starts increasing. So the dashed line is the title, toxicity, or hops, and the solid line is um, narrative, toxicity, again, over hops, right? So at the onset, at the beginning, depth zero, the seed videos, we do see kind of uh, high toxicity both in titles as well as in the narratives. But over different hops, we start to see a decline in toxicity in the narratives, but rise in toxicity in the titles, right? This shows that the gap that we had seen initially in the example slide is not just one off. This is at least on 10,000 video samples that we have studied, which are recommended, top recommended videos from YouTube, right? So this shows this gap is increasing. So kind of concerning, but let's see what happens in the next slides. This is the emotion analysis result where um, we look at four main emotions. Um, as you can see on the top left corner, we have fear, then joy, surprise, and anger on the bottom right corner, right? The same thing is done. We compare the titles, emotions, with respect to the narrative emotions. Two uh, observations stand out clearly here. The first is the positive emotions like the joy, information surprise, those type of things are consistently increasing in narratives and also kind of increasing or stay gradually the same on the titles, right? Which is the top right corner and bottom left corner of the charts. So they're increasing, which is consistent with when we saw the sentiment analysis, positive emotion, positive sentiments. The other thing that we also see here, also consistent with the sentiment analysis, is the diversity. So as you can see here on the top left corner and bottom right corner, fear and anger, the negative emotions, right? these are also highly expressed as we go deeper into the depths. Meaning, recommendation algorithms, especially on YouTube, they're trying to suggest or recommend more and more diverse videos more and more emotionally diverse videos, sentiment diverse, emotionally diverse videos, but not very highly toxic videos. Interesting. So just to summarize what we have so seen so far, the first observation that we made was variation in narratives. 
right so narratives exhibit greater variation in sentiments and emotions particularly at deeper levels this may suggest that the content creators are more expressive and detailed in the main content what they're saying in the videos uh, because these are longer duration um, content they have more space more uh, bandwidth for richer and more nuanced exploration of the topic as well as their expressions hence we see a lot of uh, variation in uh, the emotions and sentiment in narratives as compared to titles increase in positive sentiment and joy in deeper narratives is seen consistently positive sentiment and joy increases in deeper narratives indicating that detailed content tends to resolve or evolve on a more positive note now, the last observation we saw for the toxicity trends which was toxicity decreases in narratives as depth increases suggesting the recommendation algorithms are recommending less toxic content or they are attempting to minimize the spread of harmful content which is one of the design elements of these algorithms titles while less toxic overall show a slight increase in toxicity at deeper depths this again could be attributed to how content creators create their titles for maybe attention grabbing headlines or monetization all right so as i mentioned we have two lines of work one is to look at um this uh, this gap that we see in titles and uh, the video content but also um how recommendation algorithms behave for regular videos long form videos versus short form videos like instagram reels tiktok because there we do not have top 10 or top 50 videos to choose from you're continuously scrolling through your feed so there is just next recommendation that you're watching uh, so we start conducting experiments on those other feature work that we are looking at is to also investigate how the topics drift over these number of hops whether the topics stay the same or they are also drifting and what happens with that topic drift meaning is that topic drift also causing narrative churn meaning people are leaving or joining the conversations because the topics are changing similarly as the narratives propagate over youtube or any other platform uh, what happens to those communities when they are confronted with those narratives or they adopt those narratives so can we do that using contagion models like epidemiological models so those are a lot of future work hopefully next year we will be able to submit one more paper <laughs> in beyond facts uh with that i would like to uh, acknowledge the support of all the funding agency that have supported this research uh including us national science foundation us department of defense army navy air force darpa dhs etc and also a list of tools here that Uh, Cosmos Research Center is developing in order to track discourse on blogs, on video, YouTube, video, uh, Instagram, TikTok, etc., and many other such utilities. And you can visit the website. I'm also hiring. I think I have just enough time to shamelessly plug for that. Um, I'm hiring on all levels: uh, graduate students, postdoc, data engineers, data scientists, etc. So if you're interested to work on any of these cutting-edge, uh, thorny problems, please feel free to visit. the website and you will see all the details with that thank you everyone